Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I would like to thank all of you for being here for our online Easter Sunday service. I pray that it would be a blessing to you and that we could all be encouraged by the resurrection, the life, the light, and the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. In the name of our risen Lord, welcome to our Easter celebration. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came, and rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Come now and boldly confess your sins, knowing that Christ is risen and God the Father has accepted his sacrifice for our sins. Merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the desires of our own heart. We have offended against your laws. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to us in Christ Jesus our Lord, who by his resurrection has overcome the power of evil. Christ is risen. Your pardon and forgiveness is sure. Today in Christ you are alive. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. At this time, I would like to welcome all the children to come forward in front of the TV or computer or iPad or phone or whatever screen you're watching this on for the children's message. Good morning, boys and girls. And good morning, Grace and George. Happy Easter to you. Christ is risen. Jesus is alive. And that's great news. Now, what we tend to think is Easter is about some of these things, like it's about eggs, right? We think Easter is about um, bunny rabbits, right? We think Easter is about candy, right? We think Easter is about flowers. And it is about all those things, but it's something really much more important than these things. So let me show you what Easter is about, okay? So George, could you lay down here, George? Just lay down like you're hurt. Lay down like you're hurt, George. Yeah, sit down right here. Oh, that's it. Oh, George, it looks like you're hurt. Oh, okay? no, poor George right? got and hurt. your head right there. Lay down. Oh, George, he's hurt. We need a rescue. Grace, hop on that. Make the noise. Here comes the rescue. Okay, help Georgie up. Help him up. All right, help. Is he hurt? Georgie, okay? All right, help him up. Oh, yeah, let's help Georgie up. Oh, all right. Okay, let's bend. Okay, let's help him up. Oh, he's doing better. Okay, great, George. Have a seat there. All right. You, you feeling better? Thank you, Grace, for the rescue. And Easter is about God rescuing us because we were held down by the things we did wrong. We were held down by our, our sin, but Jesus came along to rescue us. He gave his life and he rose on Easter morning to give us eternal life with God. He rescued us from the bad things of sin and death. And so today is a happy day. Today we have eggs, we have flowers, we have um, candy, we have baskets. But most of all, we have the rescue that God gives us through Jesus and him being alive. And he loves you very much. And all of us here love you too. Have a blessed, happy Easter. And all of you too, a blessed, happy Easter to you. The epistle lesson for Easter Sunday is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our service continues with the sermon for this Easter morning by Pastor Nelson. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. We began our sermon series, 40 Days with Jesus and His Names, on the first Sunday of Lent. That was March 1st. 
So to me, that seems like a world away. Such a different world. Some of you may be even to, able to recall that back then, we were able to go to church. We were able to worship with other people. Right? We could exchange the peace, even have a handshake. We could go to the store, and it didn't feel like we were entering a den of mass murders. We had a booming economy, the lowest unemployment rate in over half a century. We were safe. We were secure. We were invincible. It certainly was a different world. But I want to tell you, God has not changed. Our world might have changed, but God has not changed. His name has not changed. We need to be reminded that God knew of COVID-19 before it was given a name. We need to be reminded that in the midst of change, God does not change. Today, on the Sunday of our Lord's resurrection, we look at the most familiar name given for our Lord. Acts 4, 12 tells us, there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Salvation in no other name. And what is that name? What is that name that is above all other names? It is the name Jesus. That's our focus here today. That name Jesus. We see the importance of that name. And we see what the name Jesus means to us, particularly in the light of his glorious resurrection. The importance of the name of Jesus is shown in the fact that it was given even before he was born. To his mother, Mary, the angel Gabriel said, before Jesus was born, said of him, you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. To Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus, the angel told him in a dream, she, that's Mary, will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And there you see the linkage. He will save his people from their sins. And be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And that gives us a clue as to what the name means. The Hebrew name for Jesus is Yeshua, which means God saves, or God rescues, or God delivers. Jesus was given this name because as the Son of God, he would save, he would rescue, he would deliver his people from their sins. And that Hebrew name Yeshua is the same name for Joshua. Joshua, as you recall, was the greatest general in the Old Testament. It was he who led his people into the promised land. He brought the walls down. He secured the promised land for his people. Jesus, like his namesake Joshua, Jesus led his people into the eternal promised land. He brought the wall down that separated us from God. He secured the eternal promised land for us. And the importance of that name Jesus is shown in his saving acts. Wherever Jesus went, he saved people all over the place. Every page in the Gospels shows Jesus saving someone in some way. Here's just a few examples. He saved 5,000 people from hunger as he multiplied the bread. He saved Peter, who was sinking in the waters of the Sea of Galilee. He saved him from drowning. He saved a blind man from a life of no sight. He saved the adulterous woman who was about to be stoned to death. He saved the daughter of Jairus who was in the clutches of death as he brought her back to life. He saved the thief on the cross from hell and he brought him into paradise. You see, the name Jesus means God saved. And Jesus fulfilled that name by saving people wherever he went. But of course, his greatest act of salvation was in his death and resurrection. In the light of his resurrection, we really see what the name Jesus means to us. We really see God's seeds.
God saves. I listen to the words of the, the angel to the woman as they came to the tomb. The angel first said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. That's a message to you. You see, God saves you from your greatest fears. Whatever they may be, the resurrection of Jesus can shrink any fear that you may have. God saves, and he saves from fear. So do not be afraid. The angel continues, For I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. God saves you from your sin. Your worst sin, whatever it may be, God saves you from it. One sin we all commit is to exalt our own name above God. Just like Adam and Eve did. The temptation, you will be like God. And so, we all sin by exalting our own name. We all sin by seeking to make a name for ourselves here on this earth. We do all kinds of things to make a name for ourselves. And oftentimes that means leaving God out. But the name Jesus means God saves. And he saves through his death, through the death on the cross, when he bore our sins, when he paid the price as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so that precious name, Jesus, God saves. And the angel said, he is not here. You see, Jesus saves us with his presence. He promises, I am with you. He's, he's not in the tomb. He says, I am with you always. And he is with you right now in whatever circumstance you might be facing. And he saves you through that circumstances with his presence, with his power, with his peace. He saves you with his presence. And the angel said, he has risen. And God saves you from the power of death. Death holds all of us in its grip, but it cannot hold Jesus for long. He rose from the dead, and he promises, because I live, you shall live also. Jesus defeated death, not just for himself, but for us. He has risen, and God saved you. Come and see the place where he lay. God saves you with his trustworthy word. You know, Jesus told his followers over and over that he would suffer, that he would die, but that he would rise again. And now he fulfilled that. His word is trustworthy. You can believe it. And so as we study the Gospels and study the Bible, we can follow that word of God because it is reliable, it is trustworthy, his resurrection proves it. God saves you with his trustworthy word. Now imagine for a moment, 2,000 years from now, an historian is studying our time period. So it's 4020. The historian is looking back, and all of a sudden he, he notices sudden changes, sudden changes in, in people's behavior how they stayed apart, stayed in their homes, did not gather together. Sudden changes in people's hand washing. There was uh, uh, people frequently washing their hands. Sudden change in people's work habits. People suddenly working from home. Sudden change from a booming economy to a struggling economy. Sudden changes, people tried to battle over toilet paper. As the historian looked at these changes, he, he, he would puzzle. Well, what would cause these sudden changes? And on further examination, the historian would discover, ah, there was a plague, a COVID-19 plague that, that caused all these sudden changes. Now, imagine you're the historian, and you're not looking back 2,000 years. Then, you're looking back 2,000 years now. We're looking back 2,000 years to what happened in Jerusalem, what happened in the, the Middle East, what happened in the Mediterranean area. 
And as you're looking back 2,000 years, you, you notice, well, there's some sudden changes. There was this sudden dramatic transformation of key followers of this man named Jesus. They were kind of cowardly. Now all of a sudden they're bold and they're, they're fearless. And then there was a sudden uh, persistent proclamation of, of the followers of Jesus that he, that he rose. And nothing would stop them from proclaiming that he was alive. They were persecuted, they were imprisoned, and many were put to death. But that proclamation continued. And then there was a sudden explosive church, uh, explosive growth of the church in Jerusalem, the same place where, where Jesus died. And the church just was growing, proclaiming his resurrection. And then there was a sudden change of the day of worship. For a thousand years, the people had worshipped on Saturday. Suddenly, the worship began on a Sunday. What? what explains that? And then there was a sudden change in dietary laws for the, for the followers of Jesus. For, for they had very strict laws, and all of a sudden, they're, they were loosened up in terms of the foods that they could eat. And then there was a sudden dramatic change of, of the greatest enemy, the one who was persecuting the church. His name was Paul, and suddenly he became a proclaimer of Jesus Christ, and he became the one who was being persecuted. Well, as you look back at all this historical data and this sudden change, well, what explains that? Well, on further examination, you would say, there's only one thing that could, could explain these sudden changes, and that was the empty tomb. That was the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. It was that fact that made dramatic changes that continue on even this very day. Well, I hope in a year, and I hope even less, I hope in six months, there will be a vaccine for COVID-19. Will you line up to get that shot? I know I will. I know I want to get that shot. I don't want to get COVID-19. Will you encourage a hesitant friend or a family member to get that shot? I would if someone I loved was, was hesitant about it. I'd say, it's not that bad. Get it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help you. It's going to prevent you from getting this, 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 this disease. Well, Jesus gives a vaccine that saves us from the, the worst disease ever, the greatest danger of sin and death. See, he conquered sin and death, and faith in him is that vaccination. Did you get that vaccination? I did. I trust him as my Lord and as my Savior, and I hope you do too. Are you going to encourage others to receive it? I hope you do, because others need that sure hope that Jesus gives. Others need that sure forgiveness that Jesus gives. Others need that sure promise of eternal life that Jesus gives. I hope you encourage others to, to get that vaccination that Jesus offers. Well, I want to conclude with a, a story, if you want to call it that. Somebody call it a, a poem are attributed to James Allen Francis. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant. He grew up in another village where he worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a home. He didn't go to college. He never lived in a big city. He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his garments, 
the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Twenty centuries have come and gone, and today he is a central figure of the human race. I am well within the mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of people on this earth as much as that one solitary life. And how and why did that one solitary life have such an impact? Only because of his resurrection. You see, this one is named Jesus, which means God saves. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's Jesus. That's the Savior, the crucified one, the risen one. Alleluia. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the glorious resurrection of your Son, that he conquered the power of sin, that he defeated the power of death, and that he rose to be with us and to be our Lord and Savior. Give us, O oh Lord, a living faith in him by the power of your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen.
Jesus, now we pray. And with the heavenly blessed sing, Christ has triumphed, hallelujah. Here to the Father and the Lord, to Spirit bless most holy. We now join in confessing our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in his peace, let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross, and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we received in the waters of our baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, anoint the words of those who preach to us your gospel, and open our ears to hear with faith all that he has done to save us. Raise up many who will serve you in the various callings of your church, and who will serve us in your name with your word and gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of Donald, our President, Andrew, our Governor, the Congress of the United States, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word, that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, nor forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, across our nation, so many are imprisoned. Bless all prison workers that they may be humane and serve with integrity. Bless those incarcerated with hope for the future and amendment of life. Help them to serve their sentences with patience and trust in you. And bless their families who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips and the tithes and offerings that we bring this day. Increase in the hearts of your people delight in your mercy gratitude for all your benefits, and eagerness to support the mission of your church in the word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer any mental illness, those in their last days on earth, and all of those that we remember in our prayers this morning including Eleanor Miller, all of those in nursing homes, those who are in fear or suffering from the coronavirus, and all of those we mention now silently in our hearts. Give them grace according to their need, and sustain them in their afflictions to the day when their sufferings will be exchanged for glory in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way to eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and even sorrow of this world. Our Redeemer lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you have not already done so this week, I would like to encourage you to prayerfully consider your tithes and offerings to the Lord. If you would like to mail in your tithes or offerings, you may do so with the mailing address that is on the screen. Our secretary, Lori, is picking them up from the post office regularly. You can also give your tithes and offerings online. Simply go to our website, rlc.life, click the Give Online button, select the General Church Budget Fund, enter the amount of your tithe or offering, enter your payment and billing information, and click Submit. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. By his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints. And by his bodily resurrection, you brought life and immortality to light, so that all who believe in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave that he won for us. Keep us in everlasting communion with all who wait for him on earth, and with all in heaven who are with him. For he is the resurrection and the life. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.